What's going on YouTube? It's Jay Sauce back again with another video and today you know I had to run it back with NPBA. You know, I took a, took a break all last season but uh, from content at least. I, I played last season but I decided it was time to get back into NPBA. You know I became a mod last season and I love doing this for a community uh, but you know I'm not here alone. Today, I got the boy. We're running it back with the reunion, the Sam Sauce reunion. Tried and true duo. Sam, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. What's good, everybody? It's me, Sam, the Sturgeonator, they call me. Yeah, I mean, this uh, power rankings are not like the easiest thing in the world. I, we'd love for you to subscribe, like, and comment. You know, I went ahead and uh, put both our handles down on the slideshow. Just because any support is good support, you know what I mean. But uh, absolutely, yeah, Sam, do you want to talk a little bit on what these power rankings are based on? Yes. So, please don't hate us if we rank your draft lower. We have a very specific criteria. Good teams can sometimes not meet all of these criteria points, but it's things that we're looking players, for, not the teams. Absolutely. But when ranking a team, some of the things that we look at are speed tiers. Um, do you have a Deoxys speed and your next fastest Pokemon is a Wo Chien? That may be a point for us to look at. That Maybe you should bad. have filled in those gaps a little better. Um, how are your defensive offensive cores? Um, this is both typings and abilities. If you're super water weak, but you have a banger Pokemon with water absorb, we'll take that into consideration as well. Um, just general, like Fairy Dragon Steel, Fire Water Grass isn't the most important thing in the world, but it is an indication that a draft might just be solid all around and able to tank a variety of hits. Um, general synergy is, do you have a Sneasler and no way to set up terrain? That may be a knock against your team. Um, hazards and hazard removal control, do you have no rapid spinners whatsoever? Um, do you have no defoggers whatsoever? It's a little easier to get hazard removal in that decks, but it's still really important. Cover the rest of them for me, Jay Sauce. Alright, so, uh, I have a feeling he left me to talk about my momentum, because that's, like, one of the first things I look for in a draft, especially in a fairly offensive meta. Um, just being able to put your opponent in the blender is honestly how I won both my championships, like, it's very important, and I usually see it result in good things, more so than bad things, and if you just got sitters, like, especially defensive Pokemon, without momentum, they can get set up on easily, they can get uh, their passiveness exploited, I've had that happen to me a couple times, so I'm always looking at those fast pivots and fat pivots, um, other useful support moves, you know, you got, like, Trick, the status moves, you know, uh, Taunt, Encore, Wish Pass is one of the ones I'm looking for, especially in low tier. Uh, that feels pretty good. Especially in low tier. Especially. I actually think Wish Pass kind of sucks in traditional Gen 9 Nat decks. I, I think but it's in overrated. Low -tier, it's I don't strong. think it sucks, but I think it's overrated. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah, Valuable Terra Captains, um, I've played enough of Gen 9 to where these, especially in high tier Terra, so like this low tier is um these can just win you matchups straight up like a team that has good terror captains and a team that has bad terror captains might be worlds apart just because of the terrorists alone especially in omni terror leagues where you don't have to declare your cap or your types beforehand except for when the battle starts um overall power level this is another one that's important to me um just because seeing threats on matchups is just horrible to see. Like, I want to see Pokemon that instill fear into my heart. If I'm going up against, you know, Pokemon <laughs> that I don't respect, well, then why am I going to respect them while building? Then I'm going to want to take initiative in the battle because I don't respect your Pokemon. And that's just a whole mental thing. It's a whole prep thing. And that's for me specifically. So that's one you can disagree on, but... And then win cons. I think it, like, it also... Yeah, it plays into win cons, right? If yeah, you think about I mean, it. it does. So it's about diversifying the portfolio of Pokemon that can win the game, basically. If your only way to win the game is like... I know we're talking about low tiers today, but say your only win con is like a single Sneasler. It's a lot easier to prep. If it's just, mm -hmm. you know, 
defensive Pokemon on defensive Pokemon. So especially in the incredibly fast-paced offensive metagame of Gen 9, you gotta have multiple ways to win the game. Yeah, and, and then win cons, it's like, sure, you can have a lot of good Pokemon, but if one of them can't take over a game when you need it to, it's hard to really go far, especially in playoffs. Uh, I mean, a definition of a win con is varied, but like, if you don't have a specific way or a mod that can just win, um, if you set it up right, <laughs> it becomes kind I'll of like, that. like, of course, like stall teams have different win cons than hyper offense, but you gotta have something, you gotta have an identity. And I think. And lastly, uh, we're gonna spend about three minutes on each team, guys. Oh, we don't wanna be yeah, up for three hours time. doing this. We said that uh, last But time. we will give. Yeah. <laughs> last time, I think we spent about two hours on this video. So we're gonna keep it short and sweet and go over what we need to go over. Oh, yeah. Instead so of a list, we have a tier list because I was lazy and I didn't have that much time. I figured this allows for people to get less pressed about where they're placed personally absolutely speaking of getting pressed about where you place let's start with the d tier yeah so d tier this is like top or uh bottom of the ladder excuse me um uh, but yeah let's get into it first team is psych we don't have any d tier teams i felt like the power level was pretty like consistent i didn't feel like there was a team that was truly worse than the rest um and before we get into the c tier teams i do want to say that the, within the tiers is pretty interchangeable, and we had a lot of borderline teams, like, you know, low B, high C, so you could really flip a lot of these teams around, I wouldn't be too upset. Um, it's just a general power scale. Like I said, I didn't really have much time to go over it with a, a fine tooth comb, I think that's a saying. Um, yeah, I didn't really get to dissect them too much, so this is just the J Sauce 5 test, pretty much. But, mm -hmm, starting mm -hmm. off, we have the Maryland Torkoals, coached by new mod, Shazboy. And Sam, do you want to take this, or do you want me to start off? Uh, I'll start off with talking about the Terra Captains. So, I think that Terra Gardevoir is insane in this format. Um, her low speed is not as big of a deal in low tier, which is the format that we're playing. Um, she is the absolute top of the top. Trace is an insane ability, uh, especially in low tier. I think that this is going to pull in a lot of work. I honestly think just like Scarf Terra Fairy is going to be able to clean up so many games. Uh, and then also there's a Rapidash. Um, this could have been anything, to be honest. This could have been a Terra Sprigatito, and I don't think it would have mattered because you're going to Terra the Gardevoir every single game. Yeah. Uh, other things to look out for, you've got a lot of good Scarfers, to be honest, outside of the Gardevoir in Flamigo and Raichu uh, and Drapion, to be honest. Uh, we got some good spinner action in Blastoise, and uh, a decent defensive core in Orthworm and Hilliswine. I think this team may struggle to take some hits. What are your thoughts, Ray Sauce? Yeah, I mean, some, some of the things that concerned me, it's like, looking back on it, it's not as bad as I thought originally, but like, man, this is a J-Sauce 5 test team. Like, it did not pass. I fuck with Gardevoir, especially Terra. I fuck with Flamigo. Orthworm's my boy, even though he's a little bit passive. And I just don't know about the rest. Like, I think Blastoise, no Shell Smash, a little overpriced at 16. Uh, Quiltfish was there yeah. at 11. Tentacruel was there at 14. I would argue both those mm. are better uh, because Blastoise. The no Shell, shell Smash, smash. Blastoise. That's fair. It does add another Scarf for the list of things to be scared of. If you don't have Shell Smash as an option, I think Scarf, uh, Water Spout is water really spout. real. Yeah. I mean, I just don't respect them on enough without shell smash as an option i guess even without using it or even with using it it's just like eh. a 16 points is a lot like out of a 110 budget is a lot to pay for i get the appeal of it but whimsicott okay. i think if I've this only... team is gonna make playoffs it's gonna be because gardevoir won mvp and had the most insane 1v9 performance of all time <laughs> and flamigo flamigo can absolutely tear through teams uh, it's fine. It's yeah, pretty I mean, it's, good. It's a good secondary breaker. Yeah. Right? It's not going to be your main one. Uh, Whimsicott, I... I... I ever... Sorry. Just ask Pazm. I only ever see this Pokemon do, like, sub-leech seed sets or put up weather. Slash Encore. I don't really know what wants to um, do here. I think Whimsy is just really good at stopping the obnoxious fat setup mons I in mean, low yeah. tier. 
I don't really know much. And about it's not punished as so hard like, for its flimsy defense. I'm just yapping with no uh, no knowledge. <laughs> Drapion, I've not seen in forever. I feel like it always gets overpriced in regular Nat decks. I'm excited to see it here, especially with Pursuit Legal, because Ghost Spam was something that's worrying me a bit about this team. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Drapion is the Ghost answer on the team. Yeah, and I think I'll, it'll I'll do I'll a good job at it. There's so much it can yeah. run. It can run anything. It can run anything. Yeah. It's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a very good AV mod for this team. Probably going to run it a good bit. Um, like I said, Orthworm, Pyloswine, my boys, but both of them can be a little passive. And then there's just a Raichu there, no Terra, which is like, fine. Um, it's just fine. Li literally, I ranked these today, and I can't tell you why this is so far down, other than just like, vibe check, and also, like, you know how I talked about momentum? Like... Flamigo. Yeah, there's very little. It's Flamigo, Blastoise, Whimsicott, and Whimsicott doesn't even like to run it. That can. Whimsicott will never click U turn. Raichu is better pivot than Whimsicott. Yeah. Um, and then Blastoise, it probably does, cause it, but it's running a predictable set every week. I, I feel like this team, outside of Gardevoir, Flamigo, it just has like no breaking power. Like, you're relying on Gardevoir and Flamigo. Heavily, also the rapid dash all sucks. The kills. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a fan of the rapid dash pick, to be honest. Um, but I see the vision. Anyway, I've moving it. on. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we we spent our five five minutes yeah, yeah. at least. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this off. We got the Warta Bay Wiglets, coached by Happy Dude. Um, first things first, I fucking hate Cobalion. Uh, obviously, it's probably actually good in low tier, but uh, Pokemon, I don't like it. Uh, outside of that, triple flying type with uh, Dawn Fan as your only remover is sketchy. Now, Dawn Fan, granted, it is probably one of the best spinners in low tier. And I don't doubt its abilities. Uh, it just, I feel like it doesn't want to have to click spin every week in low tier because it's so good offensively with the coverage and with Earthquake spam. Um, outside of that, I don't think there's any real big weaknesses, but... I think I, the weakness is that he's mono lose to Ice Beam, but... <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that too. <laughs> as soon as Cobalion gets chipped, uh, that's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, I do um, like I do like the Terra Captains, I will say. Plus, I, oh, I, I, really, I really fuck with Mega Odno and low tier. But not when it's like full price. Like people were talking about this season, like there's gonna be 19 points. I'm like, that shit's gotta be 50. Yeah. Like I fuck with it. It'll be a good yeah. third or fourth round pick. But I think that's what it does here. Yeah. Moogus is gonna be annoying as all balls. I Primarin's like the worst like... mon in the game. Uh... <laughs> Go uh, okay. Yeah, no, Moogus is gonna be annoying. The worst mon in the game. That's fucking Kilowatt rule. They say no. Paralyzing. He was fine. It's just. It's bad blind. at hitting moves. Yeah. Um, triple triple fly. Anyway, I think Rock's week is like painfully. Yeah, that that is another thing that I was gonna say. This team does really really hate hazards. It's um, it's not. It's like you're the grounded Pokemon that would, that would be taking spikes. Don't even like running boots. It's like Dawn Fan. That's running boots <laughs> mainly. Oh, speaking of spikes, no spikes, no toxic spikes on this team. Little concerning for me. I like having at least one user of each, personally. So, yeah. I mean, I think the hazards in general are a big problem because rocks too. I mean, yeah, there's two rockers, but like, do you really want to bring rocks on your 19 point Cobalion? I don't. And your um, expensive Dawn fan, who's probably. Eh, who probably likes to run I mean, you, you can bring rocks on Dawn Fan, but you don't want it to feel like it has to bring rocks every week. Mm -hmm. It's the good old Saraha problem. I do love Electivire, though. If you want a solution to your Mono Lose to Ice Beam problem, Terra Water Motor Drive Electivire is kind of a beast. Yeah, until you get hit by that freeze dry. Yeah, thankfully, not a lot of those in low tier. Cryo yeah. is like. It's like really Cryogonal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, I mean, the team I think was, we... like, fine, but in comparison to the other teams, it just felt a little lower. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. What Was Gallade Terra legal, before I say anything about this team? Um, yes, but so was Noivern. 
Um, I think Glade's better, but Noivern is a beast. Um, I mean, if you're so, picking 19 point Noivern, you're tearing it. Like, yeah, that's yeah. You, I mean, you have to. I just, I would have liked to see a Terra Glade um, on someone's team. Mon's insane, but I understand why the Noivern got Terra. I think if you pick it, you have to Terra it. You're right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think Superior without Contrary might be one of the worst Pokemon ever made. Um, it's just a Glare Bot. I mean, a Glare Bot with Subseed is like okay, but it can't hit anything, man. It's so useless against another Grass type because um, it, its only form of doing anything is clicking Leech Seed. Um, and if you're bringing it just to Glare their Grass type, like boy, <laughs> that's rough. Um, Hazards. I am not a fan of one Stealth Rock user. Mudsdale's good, but its job is kind of just going to be to get rocks up, get off a body press, and die. Um, I love the Overquill for Hazards. I like the Overquill in general. I do not like the speed tier gap between Superior and Overquill, though. Talk a bit about that. <laughs> yeah, that's sketch, especially when Superior feels a little useless most matchups. Um, it's not ideal, you know. Um, other than that, I do want to talk about the reason why that this was lower. Uh, because this is, let's be real, this is one of the scariest teams. Uh, with Gallade, Noivern, with Screens. Uh, you also got, like, Mudsdale, who's scary. Like, there's threats here. But I feel like there's a lot, I feel like there's too many holes for me to put it up high. Because, yes, you have, you know, I, I fuck with the first five mods, Heavy and Mudsdale. But your only special attacker above 100 is Heatmore, who's coming to what one game maybe. Um, Greta, it, it feels like a bit of Terra Merchant, and uh, I feel like you probably could have gotten better value there. Superior takes up too much points for what it does. Uh, but I'll say if that feels good. No, listen, I'm a I'm a momentum slut, but your U Turner is Noivern, and that's it. How are you gonna get in the lane? How are you going to get in, like, a Mudsdale or Overquill for defensive purposes? Yeah. Um, Gallade is only going to be there to, like, Scarf Revenge. Um, yeah. And that's not where you want to be with your Gallade. Uh, I will say on the special attacking note, I mean, it doesn't matter that Noivern has 97 Spatak when it's clicking. No, I was going to bring that up. I, for, throat spray I, forgot to, uh, I forgot to bring that up. But still, it's Noivern and Heat War. Yeah. And Superior, okay. remember, this is no contrary Superior yep. in low tier. Yep. Uh, so. Ooh. I'm going to sound like a boomer. Uh, actually, no, I won't call this team Edge Week because you got Mud still. And Superior can take a hit if it, like, absolutely has to, especially with Leech Seed. Like, the team's, like, fine. It's scary upon first glance, but I feel like whenever I dive deep, deeper into it, I can find more holes to poke at, and that's just why I got brought down. I think of the teams that we've seen this is the most flawed yes but i also feel like i almost feel like it's got the most potential just because delayed noivern screens with overquill and mudsdale and jelson as a defensive core yeah like, i also will say this team i will say there's no spin and the three defoggers are mons that don't really want to be clicking defog yes that is you're so right i overlooked that um, when we were talking about that I... is that concerned me as well I feel like I would be crying if I had to click defog on my Klefki or my Noivern. Listen, and I Superior, just wouldn't be bringing Superior to any game. <laughs> listen, Superior might have a niche because it gets defog. You never know. Yeah, it's it's that's my favorite set is defog subseed glare. That's gonna be worth bringing for sure. <laughs> well, yes. Anyways, moving on. Anyways, moving on. We have the Elsmere Eternal. Uh, did um, you did you forget to put purple on? Something? No, so, fun fact, Kung Fu Panda huh? 4 just put in their Terra Captains about an hour ago. I was... Oh, nice. I was eating my, uh... I was eating my dinner, and I just saw the notification pop up. So... Okay, Terra what are, Star wait, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Wait, was, was Suicune Terra banned? Of course. Okay, obviously. So, it was Star Raptor and all creamy. Uh, so, this is a trick question. Because they also used a free agent point to pick up Terra Glacion. So it's Raptor Glacion. Okay. But I didn't put it up here because I didn't have that time. Wait, who did they remove for Terra Glacion? I, I think they, they had leftover like three or four, four points. They had four leftover points. 
Okay, okay great. So there's just an imaginary Terra Glacion on my screen. I, I mean, yeah. Okay, so I first off, it should have been El Creamy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can afford the Star Raptor El Creamy combination, but I think you can. You off the top of my head, thinking you about the dog. You shouldn't, but I feel like Raptor was 14. Off the top of my head. Was it? I, El Creamy I, I, certainly I, wasn't 11, right? No, El Creamy was 11. I was looking at it. Okay. So if, if you could, I mean, if that was an option, it should have been El Creamy Raptor. I don't think but, it was, but I would go like El Creamy uh, Dewblade, to be honest. Possible. Or El Creamy yeah. Sniff. Anyways, yeah. um, my biggest but, yeah, Terra Raptor is insane. Um, no grounded poison. So that this kind of no grounded works. poison. Um, it's like, what, no ground poison is bad. With magic bounce, I guess Toad's cruel to remove, but this team does not like taking poison. You do not want your Suicune taking poison. Don't want your Dredagon to take poison. Not your Alcrimi. Yeah. It's like your remover is Toad's cruel. And being a Toad's cruel user, that mod fucking sucks. Like, I'm sorry. Mon's bad. It's horrible. Yeah. It tricks you into Mon's really it bad. Through, it's, and it's not. It's your only. It's like all of your hazard game. It's your only spiker. It's your T spiker. It's your spinner. Um, it's your only hazard removal. Ignore that Star Raptor has defog. If, if you click defog on Star Raptor, you deserve to be thrown in a ditch. Um, it's your only knocker. That's kind of crazy. Uh, knock is such an important move in draft, especially um, low tier with all think, the Evil lights floating around. Yeah, I think that this Toad Scroll has too much on its plate, and. Um, it doesn't have the necessary tools as a Pokemon. Uh, AKA recovery in a good in a good type. Yeah. Um Mon kinda blows and it has to do too much. Um, Outside other things of uh, Mabostiff. Toad Scroll. Uh, I think Mabostiff is a pretty good scar for in low tier, actually. I do. Um, I, I fuck with Mabo. Yeah. But I mean the important things in this draft are the Suicune and the Star Raptor core. That Terra Star Raptor is gonna be Terra fighting most weeks, I think. Um Yeah, I could see Terra close combats are gonna hit like a truck. Well. I mean, uh, it, it, yeah, Terra, Terra Stab is also fighting. good. Terra Stab or Terra Fighting. Uh any of those three, I doubt it will ever defensive Terra. It's just gonna want to either a stab close combat or a double stab brave bird or double edge. Or maybe um, a coverage move if you get some weird Pokemon that eats the stabs plus a CC. Uh, Dublade, yeah, yeah, uh, but they picked the Dublade, so so. <laughs> so there's that. Um, um outside of like yeah. flaming toad screw, I wanted to talk about like this draft fucking loses to any opposing bulky water type. Like, sure, Suicune's one of the better water type wallers in the game, but like, I actually don't see how you beat um, waters. I guess now you got freeze dry glacian, right. And Star Raptor could probably outbreak them, but it's a little rough. I also don't love yeah. no fighting type, but like I feel like that's more common in low tier because all in the low fighting tier, types yeah. are the broken high fighting tier. types are all high tier. Herb. Oh yeah. Um, so talk about momentum again. You're gonna hear me talk about it a lot this video. Um. Yeah. One like U-turner, and it's Pokemon that never wants to click U-turn. <laughs> literally, like you want so many good pivots into Suicune, Staraptor, and Espeon especially. Those three all love just getting in for free. Especially Suicune when it can click Calm Mind and all of that jazz. Um, so it's a little sad to see that now if that happens, your uh, your removal, or not your removal, your pivot is like a Jack Tack Toad Scroll uh, who already wants to run Spikes, Rapid Spin, Knock Off filler move every week. So it's like, eh, I mean, again, I feel like this is a hit or miss team. Like, if you can play the sack game well, or you're comfortable without playing with momentum, um, I'm a bad player, so I'm not. But if you can, you do you. Um, that's all I really got to say about this team. Do you have anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I'm ready to move on to this bewildering team that I'm looking at right now. Bye. Oh, yeah. this uh, Willow Rush. So, believe it or not, this is actually a B-tier team for me until last second, because I sat down and looked at this team and I said, th this team is why I made the win cons bullet point on, like, the third slide. Because I looked at this team and I said, I see no win cons. Yeah, that right. if you just bad. look at the type weakness and resistance chart, this is the best team of all time, by the way. Look, 
Look, this is look at how crazy. many one fourth weak resistances. The one fourth resistances. The, the they're weak to nothing. The so many immunities. I mean, th this is the like defensive type chart goat team. And then I look at the actual Pokemon, and it's suddenly the worst team. So it's an interesting dichotomy. Um, I just don't know how you win the game. You kind of touched on it. You let Celestial um, Chip wrote up like. Don't get me wrong, Napoleon, Rotom, Salazzle, especially Terra Salazzle, can all be, uh, like, pretty good offensive Pokemon. You've got, like, random Soil Santa or random Coil Sandaconda, as well as, like, Sword Stance Fruzion, yeah. and, like, in theories, there are ways, especially with Chip from, like, Weezing, Quagsire, uh, Skuntank, but in actuality, I feel like it's going to be a hard time just getting in a position to where you have a Pokemon that wins the game. Can we get a mod check on Verizian's attack stat? As in, like, you don't think it's 90? No, no, I, I know it's 90. I'm just... That's that's your win call. <laughs> How do you get sword stance and when you tear it out of its dog shit typing? It's, like, not horrible. Yeah, when you tear it to just a pure fighting type for double stab on its only good move, Sacred Sword. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, 90 in low tier isn't, like, that horrendous. Especially with Tim. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're relying on this douchebag to be your win con? Yeah, like, Mon's really? not good. Um, I think most weeks, if you're going to win, Sandicon and Salazzle are more likely to be your win cons. I think you could just, like, eventually win the game with, like, Specs Salazzle against a bunch of slow idiots, to be honest. I don't think this is ever going to be used the way that it's used in high tier, which is its stupid, toxic subset. I think this Salazzle is going to be, like, Specs blow stuff up. Um, or a Nasty Plot with Coverage Terra. Yeah, Nasty Plot like is another good option. Um, yeah. Outside of um, that... Like, Skun Tank is, like, a fine ghost check, but I, I don't know. I just like to see more than one, if possible. I mean, like, Skun Tank can get chipped pretty easily, from my experience. Yeah. This is the Toxic Spikes Goat team, by the way. If you don't oh, yeah. have a no, don't round of poison into this team, you lost. Um, Literally. <laughs> um, I do actually like the hazard control on this team, to be honest. Uh, five I've defoggers. No spinners, but the defoggers are actually defoggers that don't mind clicking defog, unlike other yeah, teams where but... they have like four defoggers and they're all mons that it would be heinous to click a defog on. Yeah, but no spinners with this much hazard setting is kind of cringe. It's true. I mean, you you would much rather spin than defog every single day of the week. Spin's the better move. Um, but if you need to get rid of hazards, you've got good tools to do it. Um, I would rate this like a... A two like a 4 out of 5 out of 10. on the Hazard game. Yeah, I mean, the speed tiers are, like, fine. I mean, fine. At, least fine. Your, at least your top two are actual bringable mons. So yeah. I don't mind them being the only two above 100. That being said, are you ready to move on to the B tier teams? I am. We have the B tier. Now we got the uh, C tier teams in the tier list already at, like, 144p. Because the yep. screenshot quality decided to be dog ass. But first team in the B tier, we got the Salt Lake Cedras and Coach Bad Guy Cam, our favorite admin. Now this Ooh. team was tough to rank for me. Like Sauce, I might disagree with you on this. I, I might have put this in A tier. I can see the vision. I was switching through it. It's one of those hybrid teams for me. Admittedly, I probably put it too low in the B tier, but like I said, it's all interchangeable within the tiers. This was a borderline I team for me. Vaporeon is a mega fraud in uh, that dex proper. In low tier, where you can actually afford to wish pass consistently, I think it's going to be a demon. I think you can win the setup vape a lot. Um, Monster is going to have a tough time breaking it. Uh, I think the hazard game is a little weak, which is maybe why you moved it down to but who needs hazards when you can just punch shit? Machamp is going to be really good in low tier, I think. Um, a lot of the things that make Machamp kind of suck in high tier aren't going to be as present in low tier. Um, you're still going to be a little bit annoyed by all those bulky psychic pixies running around, but I, I really think it's fine. Um, Flygon, Terra Flygon is one of the ones that I was really looking at. Um, Alachu is pretty good too. I don't quite know why that's there. That one's a bit random XD. And then I think Chandelure with Scarf is a really insane win con in low tier. Yeah, listen, straight up, I'm petty. 
I legitimately think this is this is an S tier team if you grab Pinkerchin over like Salzburg plus <laughs> Absol, like straight up. Um, it, I do think it's a bit weird that you are not enabling your Terra Alichu. Yeah, Slurpuff. I just don't get the Slurpuff pick as a fairy. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not act like we're enabling Slurpuff with seeds. That's a, a citrus berry guy. Honest, I mean, yeah, Say but like, the option is still nice. In my uh, head. The option's nice, but I'm, I'm trying to belly drum. Slurpuff is useless if you don't belly drum. And if you Fair. don't run citrus with belly drum, you're just gonna die. So. But I mean, also, it's fat enough in low tier to run like a seed and have an annoying defensive set. It's like the idea could. behind my head, yeah. but I... I agree, it is probably just a belly jump clicker. Um, this team also has Webb's access with Machamp, which is an actual legitimate win con. Um, Wait, what the fuck did you- Oh yes, Slurpuff gets sticky with. Slurpuff that's is a Webber. Yep. That's crazy, I, I always forget that. I don't that, know why, I'll be honest. It, yeah, I'll, it doesn't make any sense. Me neither. Um, but yeah, uh, and then Honestly. it's also a way for Specs Chandelure to win the game, importantly. Um, if you don't want to run Scarf one week, you can just lead Slurpuff, click Sticky Web, and then win the game with Chandelure. Okay, now that you mentioned that Slurpuff is Sticky Webber, I would agree with you. I think this is an A tier team. I think I put too low. <laughs> I sold you. You sold me. You sold me. <laughs> Let's go. So this is definitely the best B tier team, right? Probably. Yeah, I, we'll I see. Think we haven't this seen is the other. best team that we've reviewed so far. Like, by for a good sure, margin. For sure. Oh. Yeah. Uh, only Vapo thing to criticize is the hazard turn? game, really. Hmm? Does Vapo get flip turn? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It's not Dex. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, um... Alright, moving so on. I've used four, We've talked sorry. about this team enough, I was going to give one more point. I've used okay. four before. It doesn't love to be the only source of rocks or spikes, as well as rapid spin. It can, yeah. and especially in low tier, it is very good at being able to do all of those things, but feels a little passive. Yeah, I think anyway. I think that's the one thing keeping this in B was the the hazard stuff. Yeah. Anyway, um, moving on. Huh? Moving on. Okay, I'm observing this team for the first time, and the very first thing that I notice is that your septile does not have an unburden enabler um, at all. Um, uh, and it's it's no shed tail septile, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Other than that, I like the defense. Um, you're maybe a little too ground weak for my liking, to be honest. Um, uh, that's a lot of ground weaknesses and only one immunity, and your ground resistance is a septile, which I think dies to earthquake. And they can wear out of grass type. <laughs> that guy, that guy is not bulky. Um, I guess your other grass type is Terra Grass Florgis, so that it has a real ability. Um, but to be honest, that is like Florges's fifth best era. It much prefers to go fire, ground, or even fairy with scarf. Um, I assume that you're going to be tearing your Florges most weeks because your septile can't proc unburden, so it loses to scarfers. Um, and scarfers are very, very prevalent in low tier, even more than in high tier, because there's so many shitters in like the 85 speed range. Speaking hey, of shitters like in the 85 Cleavor. speed range, like your best Pokemon, Cleavor, this guy's a demon. Uh, he is your hazard game. He doesn't need to be anything else. Um, he just needs to be lead and click Stone Axe, either a scarf or sash. Uh, or Stone Axe U turn or... are the only two moves this Pokemon has, and they're the only ones that it needs. Um. Yeah, so, uh, can we talk about Tatsugiri being the rapid spinner on this team? <laughs> Bro, this mod is so ass, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, Golbat is, like, a fine defogger, but then you bring Golbat, which is, like, okay, yeah. I guess. Especially in low tier, but with, like, rocks up. Take a 25 I'm not trying to use it. Golbat. Yeah. It's, like, a fine mod on paper, but I'm not trying to use it. Isn't it? First. <laughs> I don't even know if it's a fine mod on paper. <laughs> Um, I feel like it is. I mean, like it learns Super Fang, things. right? As far as I know, if it doesn't, then I okay. don't think it's a fine mod. Yeah, I think this thing's yeah. only gimmick is Super Fang Roost. I fuck um, with the uh, Paldea Tauros is a low tier. All of the Tauros is Paldea really... Tauros is probably pretty good. Yeah, I and think it's gonna be good both here. Hellfish, like, Hellfish, like, basically, Pokemon hate to be on this team or hate to face this team with double uh, intent. 
Yeah, double end him. Get your adrenaline orbs ready on your special attackers when you face the steam, though. I also um, really mess with Frostlass and Mega Ampharos. Um, I think Frostlass is okay. It's much better than it used to be with Axel. It can actually hit harder than a wet noodle now. Well, it's not just it, it, spike it, and debond. Yeah. And you already know how I feel about offensive Florges. It's an acquired taste. Uh, I think it's really good in low tier. I think Terra Fairy is going to go crazy. I think there's going to be a lot of weeks that you can just win with Scarf Lurches. I mean, this team has a lot of flaws, but overall, I kind of like it. Um, just, <laughs> you lose to ground types really hard. So, okay. consider that when you're choosing your Florges Terra. Um, I actually think that hurts the Florges Terra a lot, because Fire and Steel are two of the best Terra types on Florges, and it feels really hard to bring them when your whole team is already modules to EQ. Also, Berserker being the only knockoff for is a little a little sus. Uh, yeah, I agree. All right, I anyway. think that's enough anyway. about this team. Moving on, we have <sighs> the clever Clef and the Terra Swallow. Now, yes, I know that Terra Swallow is an absolute fucking backpack Pokemon, but like, I looked at the team as originally. Okay, this probably should have gone A tier, but we have so many teams in A tier. I just kind of bumped this down um, by proxy, so we didn't have like seven, no. eight teams in A tier. This team does have flaws, so it let's does. go over them. Uh, the speed tiers are shit. Um, yep. There's so many Pokemon that can go adamant against you. Um, I mean, most people don't respect Mega Bennett's speed, because a lot of times it's just going to be like bulky um, Poltergeist and then Debond. And Shadow Sneak. Um, means, yeah, and Shadow Sneak. So with all that priority, usually um, Mega Bennett's run a little slower. So you're creating two really huge speed tier gaps, not just one. There's the speed tier gap between Sw Swallow and Lilligant, and the speed tier gap between Lilligant and Bennett. Now, um, with that being said, or Beetle Webs are kind of shy with Mega Bennett being a spin blocker. But I agree. Still, I think you can just win the game with Mega Bennett some games. Um... The Mon does hit like a truck with Poltergeist now that it's got it. Also, I talked about that other team being EQ weak. Holy shit. Uh, uh, this team yeah. has, count up, five EQ weaknesses on important Pokemon. Um, I'm really and sad it's resistant. Yeah, it's resistant to the Lilligant, who does not want to be coming out on a Pokemon clicking EQ. Um, or Beetle is, I guess, your best EQ switch in, because you're not trying to switch Swellow in an offensive mod. Ooh, yeah, and it's going to be Terra Normal after, like, I trust Or Beetle, anyway, it so gets recovery, through. and, like, it can take a Stone Edge if it has to. It gets Iron yeah. Defense, like... But you don't want it to be your number one ground, uh, problem solver, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's it's just brutal ground weakness, man. You, you guys gotta draft some ground immunities. Um, and then there's no spikes or T-spikes, which is rough. And there's... Uh, your spinner is a Turtonator. Hey, uh. don't, don't shit on Big Turt. Now, that being said, <laughs> it should not be your only Rapid Spinner. Uh, I fuck with Big Turt, but not as a Rapid Spinner. It's just like... Yeah. You don't. You want to run boots, but you don't want to run boots at the same time. It's just mm -hmm. like, eh. yeah. Buckle Another team up. with a lot of highlights, and then also a lot of flaws, which I think is what B tier is all about. Yeah, I mean, this is teams that will fucking show flashes, right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, mods is about consistency, and these are teams I have a few questions with that with that category. Okay, we got to move on to the next team so I can maul a little more. Okay. Herb, anything else you want to talk about? Herb Matisse is, like, fine. S same with Lantern. I actually think Lantern's pretty, pretty shy still in both tier. And then, I have a love-hate relationship with Makalola. I, I think mm. that Pokemon feels fine. good on paper, and then, like, when I use it, it just doesn't do a lot. But I think Are that's you, like, world's number one AD merchant? That's all this guy does. Listen, I know! And it still doesn't do that much for me. That's just like nice. red flag number one. Um, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Moving on from this team, I All right. swallow is gonna lose, 
gonna win a couple games by itself. Let's be real. Yeah. Now. All right. Okay. Can I, can, can someone draft a, a goddamn team that doesn't take a million from EQ? What's going on? Um, okay. so counterpoint. Counterpoint. Mandibuzz takes thirty for thirty percent from a Stone Edge. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But once, I mean, uh, the shining light is that once Mandibuzz dies, at least you have to say why. Yes. Um, but holy moly. That's There's another team that doesn't feature the spikes or spikes also. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one thing that I'm going to point out right away is that um, you're going to be using Defog a lot over Rapid Spin because your spinner is a Hitmon Chan. Um, and it's okay to have a team that's like defogging and not setting up a lot of hazards uh, if your breakers are really, really good, right? Um, are the breakers really, really good on this team? Mm -hmm. They what have their think? moments. Tarantelion, Tauros, Delphox definitely have their moments. Yeah, Tauros is a GOAT. Um, I had a low tier league where Tauros won MVP of the season, and I got to finals with that team. Uh, Taurus is a sicko mon, especially in low tier. It punishes everything in that deck. It learns like every type in the game. Um, if you're a good Tauros user, there'll be weeks where you bring Fire Blast and Blizzard, just to even off that 45 or 40 Four. attack stat. Um, it is shockingly good against the mons that it's quad against because Life Orb Sheer Force is just broken. Um, and then Inteleon, which is the Pokemon that we should probably be talking about, <laughs> um, is just. So good in low tier, man. Oh my god. Uh, 120 so speed, good. it's the fastest thing on the side of the Mississippi. Um, 125 to attack, it's gonna hit like a truck. It's gonna crit everything for huge damage. Um, just a beast. Yeah, I think one thing we've been kind of sleeping on when we see all of these ground weak teams, which like is probably the most uh, overall, I feel like if we see a team that's weak to something, it's probably ground in high tier and low tier but I feel like one thing we don't talk enough about when we see a ground weak team is okay how do we or do we have Pokemon that punish grounds offensively do we have Revengers to scarf EQ users and this team says yes we have Inteleon and we have we have Inteleon to threaten them and revenge them and we have Decidueye to eat it and Mandibuzz so I think it's manageable not ideal but manageable Delphox also gets like random grass knot. So yeah. it's like fine. I want to see at least one game this season where you sweep with the the SD Spirit Shackle uh, Trailblaze Roost set on Decidueye. I also uh, lost with Terra Aurora, so I feel like it's kind of a troll, not gonna lie. Um, I mean, it's like, it's whatever. It was like the thing I was talking about earlier. You can have a Terra Spurgatito. You're gonna Terra Inteleon every single game. Yeah. Um, I also did want to throw out my two cents about the hazard and hazard control. Um, I mean, you, let's be real, Mandibuzz is probably a top five defogger in regular decks. And it's probably top one in national deck or in uh, low tier. So, like, not having spikes, T spikes isn't horrible. Especially because mm -hmm. Decision Wise is a fine defogger as well. So, even if you're just mm -hmm. staying up rocks with shit or Pokemon and then defogging it away, it's like fine. Yeah. And then Delphox is also there as a Scarf secondary win con. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it can just be a Specs Breaker, too. Good mon. Seal by Decidueye. Banded Decidueye hits like a fucking nuke with Poltergeist. Yeah, Decidu just, I think Decidueye is very, very good. It's underrated and, um, as fuck. In low tier. Yeah. In There's general. another Grass Ghost um, that we're going to talk about later in what I think is the best team um, I, by yeah. a considerable margin. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, and that is definitely my favorite of the Grass Ghosts, after using all, all three right. of them. Um, uh, moving they, on to A tier. This is A tier, right? We have, uh, yeah, we're moving on to A. Alright, so yeah, as you can see, we had four teams in B tier, uh, but moving on with A tier, our first team is the Radical Rotoms, with quite possibly the most based but also atrocious logo I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I don't even know what's going on here, to be honest. It's just like peak brain rot. This yeah, is like this is a mega brain kid. rot logo. Speaking of mega brain rot, there's the Terra's of Stryka. Um, but that doesn't matter, because the other Terra captain is arguably 
one of the top five most broken terror captains, in my opinion, in oh, yeah. the slow tier draft league, and that you've, is uh, Hatterene. You've used this Pokemon before. Give your two cents on it. Uh, my Terra Hatterene was top five in MVP. Um, she completely carried me to, I think, s was that Simmies? I don't even remember anymore. Um, but the Mon was completely insane. Um, it doesn't have to just be like a CM win con. This Pokemon is also really good with just Magic Bounce uh, Eject if you want to play the offensive game. So it in itself is momentum. It either reflects their hazards back at them or brings in Entei. Um, and Entei was Giga Mega Super Terra Band, right? Um, Unfortunately, I was so, looking at it all draft yeah. process and then yeah. someone asked about so, it to the mods and they're like, yeah, it should probably be banned. No, it's it like, should 100% oh, have been banned. Oh, I agree. Because even without Terra, this thing is a threat in low tier. No, I know. Um, I think I this Entei is going to put in mega work. Um, you're you're still a little ground weak, but it's not that bad. Honestly, it's okay. I mean, eh. Serena? Swamp or Serena <laughs> should be able to take care of it, I think. And I'll yeah. Uh, Altaria gets Will O'Wisp, by the way. Did you know that? That's crazy. Who? Altaria gets Will O'Wisp. That's, that's funny. That's crazy. Altaria, I, I, I'm not sure what it's doing here, but, you know, <laughs> it's doing its best. Um... You're completely reliant on Serena for um, hazard removal, if we're being honest. I'm not trying to click defog on my haunch crow. Um, but that's fine. Uh, you've got some okay stealth rockers. You've got the little Crustle Shell Smash Win Con, I guess. Um, Mock is broken <laughs> for, oh, like, what was it, five points? For five points. That's an best, insane five pointer. Best um, um, Meow Scrata switching ever. Yeah. Uh, there's a Clang. There is a clank. I don't know uh, what the clank on. is doing, but <laughs> yeah, it's a steel type, there I is guess. A clang. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. There's that's, a steel that's type. That's not clink clank, clank, ladies and gentlemen. It's a clank. Um, uh, speed tier is yeah. kind of and concerning, then, me, right. to be honest. Yeah, I think this was like a this was a borderline B to A team for me. Yeah. This might be the weakest team in A tier, but Entei Swampert is so sick, and Terra Hatterene. I mean, that top four is just nasty. I look at this and top then Mock is going to put a lot of work. It's among one of the best cores in the league. So it's hard yeah, to it's really... A insane, it's an insane Firewater grass. Lower than low high, high B. <laughs> so it's like yeah. high B, low A. I was fine with either way. Just lean A. Because I believe yeah. in A. Yeah. Have. yeah, it's a good team. A lot of good knockoff users. A lot of good stuff going on. Decent pivot with the flip turn on Swampert. Uh, Hatterene should win a few games for you. All right, moving on. All right, next up... Oh. Tikatons. Taking a page first... out of Poke Game MD's book. <laughs> is this the first um, nine mod we've seen? I could be mistaken. Um, I think I so. First nine mod we've seen. And they went they went so heavy with the high pointers that they went nine mon with a Tinkatuff. Oh yeah. Tinkatuff. Oh though I think people put Tinkatuff at like. Do not five blaze Tinkatuff. Oh, I'm not going to, huh? don't worry. I'm not huh? going to. The they other spent mods. How many points? On a Tinkatuff? It was like four. Hold yeah, on, this mon, on my phone this, this mon should give you a point for drafting it. I agree. It's um, not good. This is a mega on mon. Someone spent four points on a Tinkatuff? Let me pull up the board right now. Four point Six Tinkatuff. Points. Six, Six points Tinkatuff. Okay, so this draft has minus five points. Listen, uh, you know in. what other Pokemon was six points? Who? Togedic. Albeit okay, same well, type as Enamorous, so, but it's a fairy type. Okay, I, I love the mod team on NPBA, but if you think Granbull and Tinkatuff are on the same level as low tier fairies, um, you should get your brain checked. Listen, anyway. you gotta understand, these tiers are made like. 30 minutes before draft started. Not all of them, Basically. but a lot of refining happened then because anyway. our expert low tier guy, DDA, was busy like the month leading up to the draft and we were all just. Oh, is like, that Daddy Dark Aura? I hate that guy's name. He's the goat, though. Yeah. Um, I, I say DDA. Anyway. I don't want to be caught on camera saying the first part of his name. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about some of the other Pokemon other than. Uh, Terra Arboliva. 
yeah, PokeMMD has proven time and time again that this Pokemon is completely broken. Uh, shout out Joey. Um, it's an insane low tier Terra Captain. It does so much. Seed Sower and Harvest are both fantastic abilities. It's so flexible. It does everything. Um, a set that I highly recommend is that you uh, go eject pack with Seed Sower. Yep. Um, into a Pokemon with Grassy Seed that can set up like a- Oh hey, there's a Hitmonlee! Yes, you can also eject into your win condition, Hitmonlee, <laughs> or uh, Grassy Seed Turtle. They're, they're both solid. Uh, Turtle kind of sucks big time in <laughs> that dex proper, but I actually think it's really strong in low tier. Um I wish Especially it would have gotten the Terra nod. Unfortunately, Sandy Shocks is also goaded with Terra. Yeah. Uh, Sandy Shocks is going to be... Wait, it, this thing is going to hit like a truck, actually. I'm yeah, thinking I'm about so Sandy Shocks. I'm so pissed Lutheran. Sandy Shocks Terra's here because I, after using Sandy Shocks, I was looking forward to just drafting a ground type and slapping an uh, air balloon on it and being like, okay, this is my Sandy Shocks check. Just like I got hit time yeah. and time again in MPBA or in uh, ECA. And Dude, imagine this that. team if it wasn't minus five points. It's I insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, oh, we got the Poon Poon Goat, Miss Magius. Um, Absolutely. Shout out Poon Poon. Listen, this is Poon Poon's guy, but I don't fuck with it in regular Nat decks. But in low tier? Oh, in low yeah, tier, it's, it's insane. It's, it's baby flutter. L literally. Incineroar also a goat. Now, mm -hmm. that being said... AV Incineroar is going to be pretty good for you. That being said, your uh, hazard game is pretty ass. Now, you do have Sandy no, it's Shocks, garbage. Terra, there's, there's a Sandy Shocks and I think a duck. Terra Sandy Shocks <laughs> is going to be running offensive. Like, let's be real. Like, the idea to yeah. run, like, Terra Ghost hazards is nice. But, like, with I Terra, agree. Sandy wants to be offensive. <laughs> I think Terra Ghost will come one week. I think some weeks, the weeks that Sandy Shocks um, does bring hazards, Arbolita is going to be like the star, and I think that's fine too. So, I think it's fine. For, it is. I just like um, to see a secondary option that's not Tinka Tough. Yeah, I agree. Those six points could have been literally anything. I think Karkul was two points, and Karkul oh, might be 20 Karkul. times better than Tinka Tough. So. <laughs> I mean, other yeah. than that, like, rapid spinners are, like, fine. I respect Tentacruel a little bit more now that I've actually used it, personally. Yeah. It's still, like, um, fine, but it's not as bad as I thought it was. The hazard I game is decent with Incineroar parting shot, Sandy Shocks, Volt Switch, and Tentacruel Flip Turn, and then Arbolita potentially ejecting. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen. The hazard game is not excelling. Neither is the momentum, but it's above where it needs to be to put this on kind of the top echelon of teams for me. Yeah. And all I the threats are mega, mega scary. Yeah, this is a high floor, high ceiling team for me. Like, I yeah. have Transaction, you're Tinka Tough. Yeah, I agree. To be fair, it's probably a mascot pick, but still, it was six points. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Um... Oh, GG. Oh. This guy is the best terror captain in the entire draft. <laughs> uh, I have no comment. You, do you want to talk about Terra Bird? You can talk about Terra Bird. I do not okay. play Bird enough to uh, see it be that guy. Okay. I, I think this is the best terror captain. Uh, it's between this... Um, in my opinion, it's between this mine and Atesians, which we'll, spoiler alert, uh, get into I would later. Say, I would say mine um, is up there, too, in the discussion. It's pretty good, yeah. Um, this thing is disgusting. Berserk is an insane ability. Terra Fairy Ultra Scalar, I think, is broken in Nat Dex proper. So, in low tier Nat Dex, it's completely ridiculous. Uh, this thing gets off one speed boost, and the game is over uh, after it gets a Berserk. It's so bulky, it never dies. Um, you can run all sorts of sets. You can even run Specs one week if you really want to. Uh, Fiery Wrath is ridiculous. This Pokemon is just so crazy, man. Um, other things that I think are worth talking about. Um, there's a Tinkaton, which is an actual good Pokemon, unlike its pre-evolution. I agree. Uh, I think it 
I think it's super good in low tier. Uh, Gigaton Hammer is going to hit those guys pretty hard, um, but the main thing that this thing wants to be doing is T-Waving and Encoring. Encore is very, very good in Gen 9. Um, it helps you get your Moltres Water in to win the game. Yeah, it's always been good, but especially in Gen 9, which is such an offensive setup heavy format. Your hazard setting is pretty good. You have four really good rockers that actually want to click rocks. Uh, you have an okay spiker in Gastro. An OT spikes is a little sad, but really it's fine. Uh, and you have, in my opinion, one of the better spinners in low tier, hit him on top. Um, I'm okay with this being your only rapid spinner because it's so good and uh, technician pursuit is legal, so it doesn't get spin blocked as hard as it might normally. Um, and then Rotom can click defog, it's it's not bad. Um, and then, yeah, Terra Flareon doesn't need to exist because you're going to be tearing your Ultra Scalar every single game. Your speed tier gaps are a little funky, but no one can expect you to have a speed tier gap between Electrode and your next Pokemon. Um, I think the only things that can run Adamant against you comfortably are, are 105s. Is that right? 105s can run Adamant I against Tinkaton? They not. Maybe they can't. And Jolly Tinkaton is like, not. So the speed tier gaps are honestly fine. Um, yeah. I'm I'm struggling to see anything really wrong with this team. What do you think, so? Look at all of the zeros on the type chart. Oh, yeah. That's insane. Just straight up. Um, other yeah. than that, oh, and Mesprit's fantastic. The other than here. That, this is just like this is how I've been drafting recently. You get your one and two, one or two broken Pokemon, and then you just grab great role players around it. And I mean, that's yeah. just exactly what he did, and it's so good. Like I do not see any real flaws in this. I might have put this S tier, and this is like as good or better than my draft. Um, might be better than my draft, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty mean, crazy. I, I kind of reserved S tier for like the top two or three teams, but you could definitely make the argument that this is one of those. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, speaking of your draft, I'm you next. want to go ahead and talk about it, and then you talk about my draft first, or how do you want to do this? Sure. Um, you can talk about it, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. Yep, I like well. that because we got different perspectives. Uh, first off, yeah. I want to talk about how. The amount of true defensive walls in low tier is honestly few and far between. I feel like low tier, when you look at the board, it's a lot of offensive Pokemon. Less, like, hyper offense than standard net decks, but more regular offense. Like, you know, you, you got less screens, hazards, all of that, but you just got some hitters. So having two of the best walls on the board picks one and two phenomenal terra iron thorns dog terra chinchino dog copperaja's my guy and your guy robombi sets of webs it's an actual quiver dance slash specs threat literally probably my only gripe on this team is uh, only because you have a charizard but not because you have a charizard it's mainly because i would have loved to see a u-turn punisher but the only two I can think of on the top of my head are Talonflame and Moltres, who just happen to share the same type as Charizard. And I don't blame you for picking any of your other six before that. So it's like just minor. Um, on top of that, I fuck with Claydon, Arbok. You know, I'm not sure about Mr. Mind Wish Cash. But you kind of fill out the right hand side pretty well. You are a little weak to water, but then again, like you're bringing Alowochi into every game. Iron Thorns can deal with it with Terra. It's fine. Uh, rapid Spinners are a little sus, but fine. Same with Hazards. It's like a little sketchy, but very passable. Um, the Momentum is where it gets a little iffy for me. But I know you're fine with playing no Momentum, so it's kind of a meta decision. Um, outside of that, the... I, I mean, yeah, the team's just good. Terra and Chinchino tidying up all the hazards is kind of funny. Uh, I mean, this is just a very good team. It's really hard to uh, nitpick some holes in it. I will say Charizard being your most reliable special breaker is also sus. But uh, I'd love to hear kind of your thought process for the mods on the team. Yeah. So um, my thought process behind first picking Alamola is that it's fucking broken. <laughs> yep. I think... 
So here's the thing about Aloe, right? Aloe, the only real weakness to Alamomola in Magix proper and in Paldex is super powerful Pokemon that can sub up on it and that don't care as much about getting a luring voiced. Uh, Pokemon like Curum Black, stuff like that. Those are the real Pokemon that punish Aloe and stop it from being like this unbeatable wall. Uh, those Pokemon do not exist in low tier. I do not know how Alamomola even gets broken in low tier, to be honest. I think it probably should have been banned. Um, I think it was the best first pick on the board by the time that it came to me. And the Wochien was there just to um, be my other defensive option. I think Wochien's actually not the best option available when I picked it. I just really like this guy and I wanted to use If this is Terra uh, Wochien, you legitimately have the best defense in all of the league in just two picks. Like... Yeah, and I did think about Terra Wochien, but then I drafted... Um, what I, I put this as probably a top three Terra captain in my opinion. I, I can think it's see super it. underrated. I kind of I kind of think Thorn should have been Terra banned. I don't know if anyone on the mod team has played it or played against it, but I think it's pretty oppressive. We we just um, it was the mod, but not like two OP. Yeah. Like Terra Ente, Terra Suicune were definitely two OP. This was more of a I, split yeah. Hit. I think that goes without saying. I meant of the legal Terra captains in top three. Um, yeah, the Mon stats are just so bonkers, ridiculous. Um, Proto attack hits like a truck. The Dragon Dance sets are absurd. Loaded. Um, you can even go Hazard lead. Yeah, um, you can go Terra Bug. Lo the loaded dice. Yeah, with Pen Missile. Oh my God, the Mon is just ridiculous. I'm really happy with how my type chart panned out. I feel really good about all my resistances. You made fun of Mr. Mime a little bit. This thing's kind of underrated as a Scarfer. Um, maybe you'll get the chance to see it. Um, it's also just a really good Encore user. It can switch into special Pokemon, and it can Encore them into CM until they have to struggle, so they'll obviously be getting out of there. Um, and Filter helps a lot with the fact that it has very low HP. Um, other Pokemon worth mentioning, I think Arbok is actually pretty good on my team. I think it's really good in low tier. I think the fact that it was three points was a little criminal. Um, it's Glare, it's T-Spiker, it's an Intemer. Uh, it has pretty decent spat, uh, stats, and it has decent uh, speed as well for a defensive Pokemon. Um, Claydol isn't my actual Rapid Spinner, since she knows my Rapid Spinner. Um, Real. And it's a Rapid Spinner that can't get spin blocked. Uh, tidy Up's pretty good. Um, my uh, Rabombi is a pick that I'm pretty happy with. And then Caparage is the mascot, and he's one of my favorite Pokemon, and I think he's really good in this draft. So yeah, I'm happy with how the draft turned out. The Whiskash is a little bit troll, but I had an extra point and didn't know what to do with it. And it's Pokemon that can set up hazards, and uh, because of Oblivious, can't be taunted, which I like. And um, test Dragon yeah. Dance. The Rambat set is kind of... Uh, yeah, I'm never clicking Dragon Dance, probably. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the Zard. Uh, you'll see. I think Zard's pretty broken in low tier. I, I believe um, it. I was just saying, in terms of other fly, or fire flying types, I just kind of wish it, there was another. Yeah, that's fair. All right. All right. So, uh, moving on. Yeah, we're we're gonna beat right some more. We're gonna glaze some more, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, putting both of us in eighth here feels kind of like the meme of Obama giving himself the medal. Yeah, um, I mean, I legitimately think we've got two of the top what six, seven drafts. Like, I, I feel like this is pretty easy eight tier for both of us. Uh, I think so. I'd probably put myself below your team. Um. Joe's team and then the last two, so I guess I put myself fifth or sixth. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about your draft a little bit. So, to be honest, uh, I think you are giga trolling by picking Cyclozar. However, <laughs> 16 point Cyclozar is a little bit less of a problem when you have the insanity of Terra Reuniclus plus Bisharp. Um, I actually don't think you'll be tearing your Reuniclus to a different type that often. <laughs> I think Terra Psychic Reuniclus is kind of ridiculous. Uh, it just hits way too hard. Um, there's some weeks where you're going to want to go other things, but it's not like it has to go Terra Poison, because it doesn't Thank care you, if it gets toxic. Um, yeah. Uh, Terra Fairy is probably pretty decent, because it's decent on everything. Um, I think Quillfish is a very good mod in low tier, just like I think it's a very good mod in uh, Paldex. And um, you have one of my favorite Pokemon of all time in draft, Gligar. That Dex Gligar is, I think, my second most picked Pokemon in that decks behind Alamomola. Um, 
and you also have this random row to mow, which is going to be fine. Um, it's going to do its job. I think your hazard removal is decent. You have dog shit cycles are to rapid spin uh, and do F all else. Uh, and then you have <laughs> random mode to occasionally hook defog. Your hazard game is fantastic because Quillfish and Gligar are fantastic. And then Haunter is pretty good, actually. Um, I think people sleep on Haunter a lot. Um, it's got an okay speed tier. It's just a really good Scarfer. I prefer it as a Terra Captain because I think it doesn't hit quite. It, it doesn't hit quite hard enough as a Scarfer without Terra. I don't know if Haunter was a legal Terra Captain for you with Reuniclus. I doubt it. I assume Haunter was like seven or eight points in this. No, um, but it, if it was legal, it was legal. Was I was just torn on which one. Oh, uh, well, you should pick Haunter instead of Doug Trio alone for sure. I mean, um, it was like making one of my Pokemon better. Or trying to make all nine Pokemon actually breakable. I just decide for the nine Pokemon route. Yeah, I would rather have an eight Pokemon draft for the Terra Haunter, to be honest. <laughs> I could see the vision. Um, I was going back and forth between them. Yeah, and then Dashboon is fine. Yeah, it's so, fine. I mean, as you'll see eventually, uh, you just gotta trust the process. These picks were not entirely mine. Um, now, I did make the Cyclozar pick, and I know you're going to troll me, because... It sucks. Yes, and after the pick, I saw I saw there was a Talonflame, I saw there was a Crobat. My whole reason for a Cyclozar pick was fast utility. With Reuniclus, with Bisharp, I wanted some excellent supporting mons at, first and foremost, fast utility. But, that being said, I don't think Cyclozar is all that awful. Listen, shift gear with 95 attack and low tier is not horrendous. Yeah. It's like, am I going to bring Offensive Psychozar every week? No. But it will do what it needs to do. Uh, plus, regen with Reuniclus potential regen is kind of funny. Rotomo sure. is very random, but it felt kind of good in a way just because Bish, I hate it. I wanted an EQ answer because I, I was looking at the teams. I see no team has a fucking answer to Earthquake. I want to grab one of the better ones off the board. And then Quillfish, I was looking at Tentacruel, didn't, felt like I didn't need the extra Rapid Spare because I had Cycle. Grabbed Quillfish because it was three points cheaper. Doxmon, it just fit this team extremely well. Gligar, it's one of my favorite Pokemon in draft. I've drafted this Pokemon like way too many times. Like, it, it's so mm -hmm. good. And it was Amazing. somehow still up. Now, it was 14, which some people argue is overpriced, but I got it in round 7 when I was thinking about taking it in round 3. So I'll take that one for me. I think, then, yeah. I think having a wall with immunity in a format where it's just a bunch of shitters clicking toxic is... Yeah. So, and then I grabbed my two frail guys at the end. Um, the only gripes I really have with this team, no fighting, which again, like I mentioned, is not that big of an issue. The speed tiers are a little wonky. Yeah. Um, in addition, none of my true offensive Pokemon, I'm talking Ryun, Bisharp, Haunter, Dugtrio, get momentum. It's going to be like my hybrid, util, offensive guys spamming it. And then I don't really have like a true special wall either, even with Eviolite. So this, but I'm an AV merchant. Like my win, my win rate would probably be 20% if AV didn't exist. So like that a little deceptive but overall i'm very proud of how this draft ended out especially when it was kind of left to a higher power at some points i do i do love the the bisharp dosh boons energy those guys are going to be best friends yeah i agree and like come on everyone shit on me for 57 base hp wish passes look at please look at my average hp stat this is stupid yeah your <laughs> mono lose to nightshade but. Oh yeah! If I lose to Nightshade, I'm going to call it quits. Don't worry. I'll, I'll hang I think it half your mons get two hit KO'd by Nightshade. And it's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if if you like counting, you can see that we have 14 teams and an S and uh, the S tier slots left. Uh, 16 minus 14 is in fact two, so we are at the top two at this point. Um, yes. S tier, and I. I I feel very confident about these being the top two teams, to be honest. Personally, but let's get uh, to the first one. This is 
your choice for number one. And I can see why. Uh, so I'll Yeah, this is it. my choice for number one. Um, so I mentioned my top three terror captains in the draft, which I thought were Iron Thorns, Moltres Galar, and then the last one is Diancy, um, which I think is arguably number one. I think Diancy is... Terra Diancy is one of the better Terra captains in actual PAL decks, um, in my opinion. Um, it's ridiculous. I've used it, I've lost to it, I've won, um, like, I think up to semis in three different leagues with it. Um, and I've seen it be used in finals games. It's just, it's amazing in proper PAL decks with high tier Terra. Not even low tier Terra, high tier Terra. I think it's an amazing terror captain in that format. So in low tier, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, it never dies. Uh, those terra fairy moon blasts hit like a truck. Um, you can go terra steel. Um, you can go weakness policy. You can go terra sweeper. Um, and you can even just go utility because the thing that I like about this fancy pick is that you have a fast offensive Pokemon and Ambipom as your other terror captain which enables the Diancy to go defensive on the weeks for once to go defensive without feeling bad about losing your big Terra captain. So I think Ampom's gonna put in a lot of work too. I think it's really fast. I think it's skill link is gonna hit like a truck, but you can also go technician loaded dice, which is what I'm excited about to see with Terra normal. Um, I think Bronzong is a great compliment to Diancy, great compliment to Diancy. Um, it takes everything that she struggles with so you don't have to Terra too early. Um, also, the mod is just insane. Your hazard game is ridiculous. Taurus Patea Aqua and Seismitoad is doubling up in water in a good way. Um, you have your bulky water and you have just a punch stuff in the face water. Uh, Zoroark is going to be really frustrating. Um, the ways that you answer a lot of these Pokemon are not the ways you want to answer a Zoroark, and that's exactly how a Zoroark should be played. Um, the one thing I do kind of wish is that you had a Pokemon that was a little more psychic weak than Tauros Paldea Aqua, so that you could bait a little harder with the Zoroark. Like, I love using it with stuff like Sneasler. Um, obviously, there's no Sneasler in this format, but I, I think the Zoroark pick is still pretty good. Um, it's got a good speed tier for you. Um, Detonate is an incredibly annoying Pokemon in low tier, to be honest. Um, those recycle sets are going to make people maul their brains out some weeks if you choose to bring them. And the final two Pokemon that I want to talk about... Yeah. I want to talk about this Delmise and Moltres core. Oh my god. Holy... <laughs> if I was sitting Just at my disgusting. desk right now, it would be floating. This pairing makes me bricked up. Yeah. I mean, Seismitoad, Delmise, Moltres together is nuts. Um... Delmais and Moltres take the grass hits for Seismitoad. Um, I mean, it's classic Firewater Grass, but better. Um, the Delmais is one of the best Rapid Spinners available, if not the best, um, in my opinion, um, in this low tier format. It's just so strong. It's like a truck. Um, and then in Moltres is just really good. <laughs> um, any rock moves that would be directed at Moltres, you're really scared of Bronzong or Seismitoad coming in um, because they both punish rock types very heavily. Um, and even just like the general like Edgequake ground types, you're sending in a non-stab Stone Edge into a Seismitoad with your ground type. That's painful. Um, and now you're on the back foot. So the core just works really well. Moltres is really, really good in low tier. Uh, yeah, this team's insane. Yeah, I think the like one thing that's really setting me back from putting this far and away number one is the grounded poison situation now obviously you do have rapid spin defog on two of the better in the respected uh categories but like diancy toro seismato delmise none of these guys like taking toxic spikes albeit you do have bronzong mm -hmm. and Moltres to kind of avoid those but yeah. Also, Actually, I don't know what type just can send in Zorark for free on a random psychic move. Just yeah, cool. that's what I was saying. I think um, I don't know what the Dedene Swalot point situation was, but if they were interchangeable, they would rather have a Swalot than a Dedene. I see. Both are equally as annoying, um, to be honest. They're both really annoying, but uh, Gluttony Custap. Is... Oh, I love Custap Berry. Yeah, Gluttony Custap is really insane on Swallow, especially in Luke tier. And I think it gets T-Spikes. 
Uh, so yeah, I would have liked to see a small lot instead of a deny. That's a really minor thing. This draft's insane. Yeah, this is gonna be one of the hardest fucking drafts to break. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's really annoying to prep for. Uh, do you want to move on to number one? Yeah, my opinion, this is like number two or three, but I think it's still really good. Uh, I just respect. I love the depth, especially in low tier. Uh, even though mm -hmm. uh, top heavy gets a lot of the credit and it's probably more viable. I just fuck with the depth. Uh, I also think this yeah. is my favorite Terra Captain pairing in all of the league. Uh, Terra Pikachu was fucking heavily underpriced. Legit, at least you have been a 10 pointer. It's placed at 6. You can get it with a 19 pointer. I was thinking yeah. about doing Terra. that. Terra Pikachu is pretty strong in low tier. Hits like a truck. Um, the double prio is really annoying. Uh, this guy's going to be forcing people to bring helmets every week. Um, just to get Bolt switched on. <laughs> um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about right away? Uh, I mean, obviously Terra for Alligator is very strong in low tier. Uh, what's uh, what's breaking Blissey, Talon, Flame, Steelix, by the way? Um, Protective pack. Like a fighting, a fighting type with Stone Edge. <laughs> a, fi a fighting type with Stone Edge oh, is the answer. Um, of which there are many. Um, but uh, you, you have to click the right move. And Steelix is going to be annoying. Uh, it's, Steelix is the kind of mon that I like to see paired with Grassy Terrain a lot. So maybe I would have liked to see a Thwacky instead of a Gorgeist. Gorgeist uh, that's like a minor and Comfy thing. are kind of shy with this defensive court, though. Like, I'm not mad at seeing either one of them. I, my, I do think my Comfy... Least cross goes. <laughs> I think Comfy yeah. No Terra is kind of a fraud, though. Yeah. But Frisk is the most overrated it. ability in draft, by the way. Oh my what god. Is? People plays that ability so much. Frisk. It's, I mean, it's good, but it is by far the most overrated. People think that ability is so insane. It's okay. I mean, it's not like um, S tier, but I feel like... Uh, I'm just a knowledge guy. Like, if, if I'm able to see definitively what item my opponent is that helps me a lot um yeah, but i'm not the greatest I mean, yeah, play in the world so like that being something that straightforward is very nice for me yeah i also think toxic rope is pretty good uh on this draft i'm a big toxic rope fan in general in low tier oh, i fucking love toxic rope i also fuck with the cell gore to be honest, final gambit yeah. spikes whatever it wants to do. Even like uh, throat spray bug buzz. It's one of two Pokemon uh, yeah, with water shirt kit, by the way. Three if you count Wait, spear pool. That's funny. I didn't know that. Um, why? It, uh, <laughs> all of its moves are priority. It has a billion speed. Um, Wishy washy is cool. I, is it ability below fifty percent or twenty five percent? Yeah, Wishy Washy is the worst Pokemon ever made. Don't worry about Wishy Washy. Um, I think the water type to look at here is a uh, Sharpedo in addition to for Alligator. Sharpedo. Oh, but yeah, this guy's this guy's scary. One of my best friends calls this guy Shark Carl Malone. Um, uh, really hard Pokemon. And more <laughs> all season, last season, I'd call it like Shar Diddy, Shar MV, Shar Yeah, Shark Koniko. Like I was just going yeah. through all. Of them. Um, yeah, Mon's, I think Mon's pretty good. Um, uh, it's gonna, yeah. it's also gonna die to everything, but <laughs> um, it's but like it's so so like, frail. But like, you might as well just run like fucking life orb speed boost and just fucking hit something. Yeah. Overall, I think it's strong. I think I wish the hazard game was just a little bit better. Uh, Town Flame is your defogger. I did not see no rapid spin. That probably does move it to two or three. I did not see that yeah. earlier. Um, rapid spinless and like I don't like quick clicking um, defog on Talonflame. People like this like imposter Moltres set on Talonflame for some reason. I uh, like just it. draft Moltres. Um, eh. I, I think you should just draft Moltres if you're going to play it like Moltres. Um, it's not a great Moltres impersonator. The Talon Flames, I mean, obviously you have to use it in PAL decks because you, Moltres doesn't have like Defog. But that, like, the, the Boots, Roost, Defog, Willow Wisp set, you only want to bring that, like, two or three weeks out of the season. I think Talon Flame shines actually with Band or Specs um, because it's so fast and it hits like a wet noodle without them. Um, 
I can see. So I would advise looking into those sets. As someone who's drafted Talonflame a million times, I'm always more impressed with Banned and Specs than I am with the Boots Imposter Moltres set. Um, I know you're going to say, oh, but I take 50% from Stealth Rod. Just kill Chris stuff. Just leave it. Yeah, just, I'm literally lead it and kill shit with Gale. Listen, Lakes. I um, used to run out of it. Who cares? And, uh, You're going spray for it. I used it in my first championship run, and I probably used offensive and utility like Moltres LARP set about 50 50. And like the way my yeah. team was set up, the Moltres LARP set was actually great just because of the speed alone, even if I was sacrificing the offense. Being able to fire off fast will o wisps or U turn, all of that was great. So I I feel like it's a little situational. I do like it here uh, with the fast util to get something above comfy and uh, shardiddy. Mm -hmm. I can tolerate it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I, I do think it's gonna be it for the top two teams though. Even with this team without rapid spin, like I I feel pretty confident about it. That's but, uh, uh, it's a strong team. Yeah, so here's the final tiers. You know, we end up with two S tiers, uh, five A tiers, four B tiers, five C tiers. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I just want to harp on this one more time so I don't get my DMs filled with hate comments. All of the uh, inter tiers are interchangeable. So, you know, like an A tier, the Radical Rotoms and the Trouble Case can probably be switched, and I wouldn't bet an I. Additionally, um, some teams could go, we're borderline teams that could go in A or B, so like, don't be pressed if you're a borderline team. But like at the end of the day, power rankings doesn't matter. I remember mm -hmm. in season 8, I think, uh, our good buddy Phony Tales ranked 15th out of 16th in power rankings and uh, mm -hmm. finished up as the one seed, I believe. Uh, uh, went, second seed behind Benny, right? Mm, second seed, but made... Did they win or make it to semis? I forget. I think Phony made it to semis that season and then tied with Benny for... No, they tied with Benny for the second best record, right? Because they ended up both getting promoted. Yes. To Kanto. Seasons. Yeah. But, anyways, but either way, they did very well at ranked 15. I've had seasons where, um, I mean, I was ranked like bottom three and ended up... Um, finishing some user finals i've had seasons where i recently had a season where i was first in power rankings first in regular season um and i lost in finals the person ranked last in power rankings sixth in regular season so anything's possible yeah like like this recent season of eca we were playing literally like all of the top teams were the bottom ranked teams in power rankings like this shit is just for fun it does not matter and please don't go away tr please don't go trading away your whole team just because of some nitpicking we said after like three minutes of discussion yeah for real if you believe in your draft believe in your draft except for that person with tank attack trade that shit yeah trust the process <laughs> bet on yourself uh but most importantly thank you all so much for watching uh once again make sure to like subscribe and comment i will leave sam's stuff in the description you should check thank him out you if you enjoy anime he's a good short a good youtube shorts content creator and uh Aww. knows a lot more about anime than i do w. any last words um six point ticket off <laughs>